What's good, people? All right, so this is a pretty sensitive subject. I have very uh, opinionated thoughts on this, but it's also what I feel like is the absolute truth. I feel like it's a lot of liquidation, a lot of reset going on, and it's kind of scary having corporations and government run everything. You can tell who has all the power because it's taking the Fed so long to turn this ship around, but they were also a part of the problem. You know, with the stuff that they were doing, injecting all this money into the, into the economy and then tightening it up with the interest rates and things like that. It feels like just a great reset. Like, <clears throat> so there's a lot of things going on. You got immigration. You got this corporate fiduciary responsibility, which is a huge problem. Because I feel like that's a huge part of the problem in America is you got so few people controlling the lives of millions and millions of people at the end of the day because they're trying to make profit for their shareholders, as opposed to taking care of the people who keep the machine going, you know, the wheels and the cogs in that piece. You don't retain clients and customers without having good service, and you don't retain that without retaining good people. You don't retain good people without treating them well and paying them well. So it's a, a vicious cannibalistic market, I feel like. And then you got all this greed, which they call an inflation. It's basically just the the allowing of greed, all these bailouts and things like that happening on the taxpayers' back. And then you overtax the lower people at the bottom of this. It's, it's, it's a real shame the way stuff is all set up, to be honest with you. I don't want to be preachy, but, you know, I'm going to put my truth out here on video. And, you know, this video will probably outlive me. So that's why I'm doing it. You know, just get my opinion out there. So my kids or grandkids or family in the future – I want to look back and ever thought, like, what do we think of these times? This is what I thought of these times, 100%. You know, you got these things going on, all these structures, like as to where you got these corporate giants, which is a group of a few people, CEOs, sometimes CFOs and all the people up there are maybe very key stakeholders, like BlackRock, you know, people like this who will come in and then you got these these bankers these corporate bankers and you got the wall street people who just cashing in on all the cream with the cream off the top you know and it's trickle down economics which has never ever worked which i always felt like that was a big scam in the first place but it's so much to unpack in one one go so that's pretty much what i'm doing right now um but let me go ahead and sit back and dive into this which i'm gonna watch a clip for this video because i feel like they were hitting on some stuff how do i feel about jerome powell i feel like He's a part of the solution, but he's also a part of the problem, just like many of these people. I mean, they're part of the reason you got these jobs that can span across multiple states because you have these big conglomerates, basically like industry cartels. And part sometimes I think it's good to have a union. Sometimes I think the unions get greedy. Sometimes a lot of times the corporations get greedy, and you they basically it's kind of like a indentured servitude to a lot of the employees, especially towards the bottom tiers of that, you know. And then you got this thing like AI, which also has to be programmed and maintained. That's why they're paying all these, trying to pay all these ITs, the engineers, to get all this stuff up and running to get the AI right. And, but at the end of the day, all the AI is based on this information is off of the actions of millions and millions of people that it congregates and you know, puts that stuff together and forms these principles, which still have to be coded. You still have to have people in charge of that. And I don't think AI is the ultimate solution for any of that. Crunching big numbers and trying to figure out the best routes for stuff, yeah. But automation, no. When did, how, how many times, everybody can relate to this, how many times have you called in and had to deal with the AI? Is that fun? Do you feel like you've been treated well as a customer after you deal with the AI? 99% of the time, the answer is no. You prefer to talk to a real human, preferably somebody who lives in the same, you know, region as you, country as you, and speaks the same language as you. And they try to outsource everything, get it cheaper. And all that is is a cannibalistic market because that ends up gutting itself. You lower the quality. Everything diminishes, and then your customers don't want to deal with it. You know, so it's always a bad way to go. But for the shareholder's sake, you know, but then the shareholders wonder why their companies end up going down. They just they're doing the same thing that the stock market has done and the car market has done and all these bubbles, the education bubble, you know, all this stuff, the car market bubble, the housing bubble. Now it's like the grocery bubble. Everything is just everybody that's what inflation comes from. We let it you allow everybody to be greedy. 
and there's no rule in place to really protect the consumer and the average citizen. And so I meant like interest rates, all this stuff. Like, think about it this way. This is what I'm seeing it. So you let all these people over speculate the market. You let these huge companies, these corporations with the last legal thing get in here and buy up housing, overcharge for it, make all these developments. It's cool because they can hear them put up stuff. But at the same time, it's also a double-edged sword because then they also dictate the market price and they control like the tax things that go on around that because you're you got like these regular uh, regular houses there where these regular apartment buildings, six six families. You see those a lot when we was young, right? And then all of a sudden you pop up with these huge complexes, kind of like Queensbridge projects. They build Queensbridge projects and very bad housing quality everywhere. Even these six hundred thousand million dollar houses are not built to last. They're um what do you call it? I forgot what they call it when you make something to break in a couple years. So you force people back into the market to either fix it. It's like everything is just so wicked with this greed. It makes me sick. But they overpriced, overpriced, overpumped this bubble on housing and cars. You see cars, like I remember truck used to cost like, like what did the Navigator cost when I was a kid? Like 45000 <laughs> You know, and that was a high-end luxury vehicle. Now, a high-end luxury vehicle is a pickup truck, a work truck. There's a regular old truck, stinking truck. Cost about a hundred thousand, sixty to hundred thousand. That's like, that's ridiculous, bro. Like you pricing out all the average people, and people were noticing this. Like you go to buy something, not only is it way overpriced, but then on top of that, you smacking this crazy interest on it. This is probably gonna be a way longer video than I thought it was gonna be, because I'm like I said, like when I'm I'm pretty quiet, I'm a chill dude, but when I got uh, sort of a passionate view on things, I tend to talk more because I can elaborate and dig into that. That's one that expert tendency of me comes out and I want to break stuff down because that's pretty much what it takes. But let's start with housing. Housing used to be pretty reasonable. Let's say for a 1,500 square foot house in an average city size, in some decent place, not upper scale, but some decent place, middle of the road, let's say average. And they, they always, I always fuck up average to me because average shouldn't be 50 to 70,000. That's a huge ass gap. If you make, like most people make somewhere around between 30, and 50. Why they always put people, they always want to include that like 40 to 75. No, that's a huge ass jump. Those are two completely different lifestyles, especially if you're talking about one individual. And then they put median income. Median income is not realistic because you can put billionaires into that median income. They represent the top. And you can put people all the way to the bottom of the income. Let's say who make, I don't know, 15000 a year or something real ridiculous or 25000 a year. And then the median is a thing in between that. That is not an accurate representation of the average person in the United States. It's just not. And they base all these things off stuff like that. That's, first of all, that's stupid. You just put people in brackets of like 10,000 really. Every 10,000 should be a whole different bracket because that's a whole different lifestyle. It's not even fair because... Yeah, it just don't make sense. But anyway, this artificially inflated housing market is where you got this. It was under under they undersupplied it to make sure that the demand was there. Now I feel like a part of this border stuff also has has something to do with demand, supply and demand because you already know when scarcity is up, they can raise the prices because everybody is going to be fighting for it because that's the market that we live in, and these marketers know that and they always want to make you feel like you need to be in a rush because it's not going to be around. These prices won't last. It's going to keep going up. You won't ever be able to, you know, they put all this shit on you, all this doom and gloom, and then the media pushes that because the same people who own these corporations own the media, and they're going to spin it to their favor, right? They're going to propaganda, propagandize the same the way that campaigners do. Like, we're going to fix this, we're going to fix that. Yeah, you know, all that, you know, and then next thing you know, they get in there, they ain't got nothing to do with what they're doing. They're, you know, quid pro quo in it. And it's, it's sickening. But anyway, the, the inflation, all right, $1,500 house, right? Not 1500 $1, I wish, but 1500 $1, square foot house. Typically, like where I'm from, from doesn't matter where I'm from, average size city. And you got that many square feet, which is a typical size accommodation. And let's say that's a single story. Even in duplexes, two multifamily homes, typically that's about fifteen to 1,700 square feet. Somewhere in that range. That's pretty typical. Once you get above that, you're moving up in in, in class. 
because that's a different income thing unless you're dependent on a two-person income household or just someone who gets paid real well. And then that's where we get into that median income crap again, right? That's why I said they should split it. 10000 They got it like uh, $40,000, $50,000 gap between there. It's not, it's not realistic. That's like you comparing. Uh, even if you made sixty, you that's a very good income in the state. 60 Gs is a very good income. I don't care what you do unless you live somewhere like California. But you can't be comparing somebody who makes 60 Gs to somebody who makes 120. It's not the same life. You might have similar problems, but the person who making a hundred some thousand, you, if you got yourself in financial problems at that stage, it's just because you're doing too much. You know, we got to think about expenses. But back to my, I keep getting off topic. That's why I don't typically make these long form videos because I dive in and my mind goes all over the place and it's tying all these things together because life is a web like that, right? You connect these dots and when you start making sense of it, the more you get to know the crazier shit seems, but we go we go to car auto the same because the same as housing. Housing is one of the oldest games that they've been playing with. I don't like how they remove all the regulation. Then again, something some too much regulation could also be an issue. It has to be a balance, but that balance should be based off of your actual consumer market, which should be a, not necessarily just the lowest common denominator, but it should be off the the average person, not median average person in this country, the average person in this country, the average person makes roughly around 50000 Maybe that's before, maybe that's after tax. Let's just base it off something like that. That's that's pretty average. So somewhere between 40 to 50, that's pretty average, right? I would say. Anybody who makes over there, you're doing very well, and there you go. But anyway, so uh, I'm kind of losing track <laughs> On the thought with this, I'm probably gonna have to edit this up, but at least I got the raw photo this year. So I can edit this if I choose to. But anyway, that, that price point. Now, me personally, I'm thinking off material costs because I, I watch a lot of building stuff and I can see the prices and the stuff. You can add material cost stuff, just like them Sears homes, things like that, that they used to sell in the catalogs. You can buy a whole house just material wise out of a catalog. They should be based on prices off that. And then you can actually judge people based on their labor and the quality of their work. And I think installation should be a thing everywhere. I don't, I don't care where, north or south, whatever. If you want energy, energy efficiency, it should be a big thing. That should be a standard, practical application, best practice for the U.S. And if I did build homes, it should be very well insulated and very well vapor guarded and allow the house to breathe so it doesn't rot away under you and get the termites coming in and you know, that's all another different story over. Anyway, 1,500 square foot house, back on the back on the case case in point. 1,500 square foot house, I think if you're dealing with a house like that, based off material, I can't think of these numbers off head. I have to have like, you know, those th those things pulled up just off raw material, how much average the material. And then of course those prices fluctuate because we have the thing called the stock market where people can speculate and grossly inflate the price of stuff to make profit. Profiteering and cannibalism is basically what the consumer economy is driven off of that and propaganda and the miseducation of students, which is a whole nother bubble, the education bubble. And here we go. That's what it's all that's that's what it all boils down to is greed. It doesn't matter where you look at it. And that's the hugest part of the problem with this country is greed. Everybody wants more without putting any work in. Everybody wants to overwork people at the bottom because it's big stack bully mentality where they can just squeeze it out of you because you can't outlast the people at the top. That's what wealth is about. And everybody talk about wealth like it's such a beautiful thing. Of course it is, but how many people actually have it? And if people have it, are they using it right? Or are they just manipulating things that are under them? These tools. You know, that's the sick part about it. So 1,500 square foot hours back to that. Me personally. When I was a kid, those 1,500 square foot houses, a decent house, house that was built up pretty well. And prices greatly range depending on the neighborhood you went, of course, of course, because, you know, it's all a state of mind for these people. And they like to advertise, especially women nowadays, because women are mainly the consumer part of the economy because they know they have a, a tendency to spend first and think about it later. Dudes do that because they're trying to catch these women. And it's a whole manipulation thing going on there and they advertised to this and all these groups and divide and conquer. And they gave them a little bit of cloud in the workforce, which 
it's kind of like the Freedom Torch thing. Look back at uh, Ed Bernanke. Not Bernanke. That was another another uh, Fed guy, Fed chairman or something like that. Um, Manet's, Manet. I forget the name. That propaganda dude. Everybody, everybody will know who I'm talking about. But, yeah, I don't want this video to be too long. I'm already at the 15-minute mark, and I'm basically even breaking the surface on what I really want to be talking about. But let's say 1,500-square-foot house. <laughs> Back to this example again. So 1,500-square-foot house. I'm thinking the real price, the cost of material. Cost of material is always like 30%, 40% of what the actual house costs. And then a lot of that is just people putting together different trade, tradesmen coming in there and doing their thing, electrical, plumbing you know, drywall, paint, you know, finish, all those are different trades. Masonry, which is building up the foundation and all that type of stuff. So I, I study that stuff like a like a college student, believe me. I've been on it since I was a kid, since Bob Vila days. But anyway, let's say that material cost is about, I don't know, 60, 60 to $80,000. What is a fair price for labor? That's why, like, I think cars and repair are a very good estimate of how grossly inflated these things could be. Material costs, cars do not cost that goddamn much. They don't cost, like, 70000 and shit. That's branding and greed. But anyway, material costs. Let's say they cost $60,000 and they charge. And you could, if you could just base this off of the actual labor, if they had, like, roughly flat rates for the material costs, which spikes because... Because greed and oversaturation and people just fucking up natural resources, basically taking advantage of it. And you got company A, B, and C. Now, the one who seeks to gain the most or to withstand the most is basically the people with the deepest pockets because they can flood and saturate the market and control and dictate and basically cannibalize that market. And that's part of the problem is all these regulations were removed from people who were doing that. In the course of this trickle down thing, I, I swear, I, the the moment I heard that back when I was a kid, I always hated the term because I was like, that's never gonna work. If you get somebody more money, it's not gonna trickle down. It's gonna they I and mean, they've been showing that. That's why the fastest gap increase is between those. We always talk about the top, and it's, it's basically just people who have way more money who are running these companies and buying out politicians and this pork barrels pork barrel spinning. And again, it always loops back to greed, but the, that's why I keep coming and jumping off the topic with the house price. All right, so 60, say 60, 80. Let's just put it, let's get it get it higher just so we can run with this and just make it simple. All right, so let's say you got a $50,000. We're going to jump back down a little because it's always a sliding scale, right? And that's the point. So $50,000 for material cost. Which I know is pretty low. I'm pretty sure it's more like 60, 70, roughly somewhere in that range, maybe a little higher for a house of that size. And then you got all these labor costs. And with these labor costs, that's the that's the thing that always get fucked up because you got so many tradesmen coming there. It's hard to estimate. And usually we got a big corporation who basically subcontracts our owns all the people doing this work. They can charge whatever they want, pay their people very little, and make crazy profits. But they got these cookie cutter ass homes, these horrible materials that they're putting into them that barely are insulated and all this crap that just blows, you know, money just leaking out your pockets through the windows and the walls all the time. That's why I'm very big on energy efficiency. And we ain't gonna talk about these uh, technologies that are suppressed to basically make money off things for longer because they don't like paying people to come up with ideas, really. They wanna get all the ideas for free. And that's what a big another big part of the internet in these colleges is them farming ideas off people who ain't making no damn money. People who are struggling and just trying to get their name on. But I'm not gonna talk about that right now. Back to this housing market that's artificially inflated off of greed. So you got these houses. Big stack bully comes in, Mr. Money Wide. He buys up your block or he buys a house in your block. Your house average price back in the day and I think those were fair prices somewhere between 75,000 all the way up to about 200 some thousand depending on the neighborhood so we can go middle of the road not median just middle of the road in there and say like a house for 125,000 
pre seller price for a house at that, that scale. So 125, you get in there and they start buying up these houses. They're not gutting them or anything, and they just put new face on them, do some landscape. Oh, this house is now worth X, Y, Z, and they get it appraised for that because they're buying up other places around your zip code and artificially inflating those numbers, and that's where those investors start ruining the market as opposed to just regular people buying houses and doing what they do with them, whether they renovate them or just rent them out or flip them, whatever, do a little bit of updates, modernize it, new lighting, new fans, maybe do something with the HVAC and heating and plumbing, maybe, maybe not. But you got them come in, and then they raise those prices and the estimated values of houses in the market, and that also changes the tax brackets now. Oh, this house over here is selling for that. And it's a speculative market, and it's treated like stocks, so the last price is the price, kind of like contracts with NFL, just stupid shit. Don't make sense. So they do that. Your house gets appraised, and now all of a sudden these people can't afford to retain their houses because the property tax went up two, three hundred percent, and they pricing them out and they're liquidating it. You can't afford to keep it. You got that low interest, which was the bomb, you know, years and years and years ago. But they ain't doing that no more because they're tightening money and people got out of control. And you can blame the investors a lot for that, and just people making bad investments, myself included. In the car market, I make some bad investments. But anyway. So that flips around. We got a couple years of that, and those people getting bailed out, finding ways, loopholes, not to pay taxes. There's no way in hell, just because you make more money, you should pay less tax or no tax. No way that shit, shit should ever be happening in any industry. Because that's that trickle down. Basically, it's flipped up, flipped us up down, upside down pyramid is where the base should be the people at the top. They should be paying the most, period. You made the most, you just pay the most. No way around that. But greed and politics just show you who really run this. Why is it taking so long for this market correction for this shit to get turned around? It's because you already know who run it. The corporate people at the top. The banking cartel and the corporate cartels. And then you got their friends. The people who quit pro quo with. You got the government in between that. Capitol Hill. Basically, a bunch of lawyers, you know, who sit there and make help make these laws and legislations because they're getting paid to do it by their buddies, people who they're low key in business with, are getting kickbacks from, and that's the problem with the country. They let all this shit run out of control. When something should have naturally fail, they wouldn't allow them to fail. I understand why you don't want to lose all the American industry and then we're forced to buy shit from out of the country, but at the same time, you. People give them golden parachutes. They took all that tax money and basically just gave itself a bunch of golden parachutes. That's fucked up. And it shouldn't be going to stock people. I understand that a group and all these people trying to come up with ideas to better suit the business and serve the industry is good inherently and, and to some extent. But there's not enough rules placed on them as where they could just go in and gut out this place that didn't need to be gutted. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But who's really like looking into protecting the average person in that situation? Nobody. And that's the problem. It's set up to be cannibalized. That is the issue. But inflation comes from everybody getting greedy, raising the price on shit because people aren't educated well and they'll still pay for shit and think, oh, it's going to run out. We won't be able to get it. And all this COVID bullshit to. Oh, we're not getting these supplies. We're not getting that. That's why we don't need to be having all our shit outsourced. If it's made in-house, guess what? If I got a farm, I can go out there and pick some stuff. I don't have to worry about buying it from the market. But as long as we put everything in everybody else's hands, they can dictate us. And that's where I feel corporations are evil. They can be a blessing, but they can also be the opposite. And I prefer mid-sized companies as far as like the actual work environment. I feel like once you get into corporate, shit gets too political, bureaucratic and profit driven, and it basically fucks over a regular person. It's not sustainable. That's why you see them go up and go down, go up and go down, fall off, disappear, you know, and they squeeze the good one, the good players out of the market. People who had quality control in place. Is where you treat people right 
as opposed to just being fiduciary. I got to make you a profit, so I'm going to fuck over all these people to make you a profit, regardless of how it works out in the long run, as long as it good, looks good in its short-term numbers. And we'll manipulate and play with those numbers over time. That shit is fucked up. That's that's, that's really a way I see it. I could break it down more, but I don't want this video to be like two hours long or some shit. I keep jumping around with my thoughts. And that's why I'm going to have to edit the shit out of this when I finish. But this pump and dump mentality is so sick. You see them getting in, pumping it up, and then right before the bubble pop, they hurry up, sell all this shit off, and all the regular people left with that. So a lot of rich people are about to come become poor. Some wealthy people might become rich. And some poor people might become, you know, rich too. But that's going to be very few. But they will point those stories out as a feel-good propaganda campaign. And that's what people keep getting lost in. And then this whole cultural shit going on with America is sickening. Sickening. Nobody really has a financial education or um, political education. And people who do, they just get thrown into think tanks to think how to propagandize that shit all over again and cycle that market again. These cycles are sick. That's all about profit as opposed to what it's supposed, supposedly supposed to be about. And that goes all back to the found, founding of this um, republic. I don't want to call it a country, but it is a republic. Should I get deeper into it? Because they cycle this shit. The easiest way to understand it, let's look at it. Is the price on this shit? How the fuck are these houses that should literally be worth a hundred something, two hundred something, all the way up in six hundred thousand, four hundred, six hundred thousand mark range or a million dollar range for the material cost? It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Even the labor material, it, it would never add up to that. That is grossly inflated. Now, if you don't have the space to make it, of course, there then they're going to have the expansion. That's also kind of why you need the multifamily livings and things like that. Our motto, everybody wants a single family house all over the country with a, a decent amount of space, which is it's a fair want, but it's also impractical. But then again, in these apartment things, you don't get enough space. Everybody stacked on top of each other at cost savings. Even the price when that goes up every year for no fucking reason. Living inflation for what? What the hell got more expensive? We make more than enough food, water, electric, all these, all these utilities are there. Now, we do need to be converting over, getting better battery, using the better battery technology, not getting because it already exists, but it is being suppressed, just like all the other stuff that could be helping. They don't tell you how to actually run a solar, you need a battery bank. There's so much miseducation out here, and there's so much shit that's pumped out there and nobody really knows what the true facts are everybody's lost a lot of people lost in the sauce and the ones who weren't the more the smarter you get the crazier it feels the crazier it seems because people don't understand that that takes a mastery level not everybody's operating in that capacity and it's hard to explain all that shit in a very short time but i'm gonna leave this under 30 and i might jump back into this subject and piece it out because I don't want this to be long. I want to go there. I, I do watch long, long form videos sometimes, but it's easier to digest and break it down in segments. I like chapters. The price on shit is out of control. A fucking truck should not be costing $100,000. <laughs> Unless it could pull a whole, you know, uh, a house and last, I don't know, 30 years. Before you really have to replace something expensive, but then how this shit is built is built to be recycled. At some point, I don't even build shit to recycle anymore. You can barely reuse a lot of this stuff. It's so toxic. That's how another subject. Deforestation, this and that. What makes the oxygen cleanses the oxygen, scrubs it. People just mess up a lot of stuff with greed. That's the issue. I hate it. If there was something I hate, it'd be that. A cardinal sin. When it makes sense. Three is not good for anybody. That's why I'm so big on the tribal ways. The ways of this actual land. The indigenous ways. 
that might seem prehistoric, outdated, but they make the most sense because people only took what they needed. And it wasn't all about it wasn't all about status, it was all about what's the best for the tribes. For the tribes. That's what's lost in the sauce. That's what spirituality is to me. And that's jumping in on another topic. So I'm gonna leave that alone for now. But yeah. Inflation, bullshit, speculation, and cannibalism. That's what it really is. And propaganda. That's all it boils down to. Profit. Profit over people. 1% and all this. Um, what is these shadow agencies and Illuminati BS. It's just families who've been doing stuff for a long time. Who have the laws on their side. Even cities are for profit. Non-profit is for profit. It's all a bunch of bullshit. It, it works its way through the system. And they want people dependent on it so they can have more control over it. I feel like a lot of stuff that happens in China is kind of like a litmus test to see what other countries can get away with. That's why they put them on TV. Because we do want to see it. We want to understand it. But to me, it's a... It's a... Um, Kind of like a measuring stick, and also like a litmus test, just to see like what they're doing with their almost complete control versus America's semi-complete control, and they just campaign it in a different way. It's a lot of the same type of shit, like the COVID crap. You see how that went? People get sick and die every year from viruses. You don't need man-made stuff to. Oh yeah, maybe I felt like that was population control, but this shit is going everywhere. Let me play the video. <laughs> Let's see what I'm going for this. I'm going uh, I'm to have to edit this long form as a video. It's going to be like 40 minutes. It's crazy. All right, back to the video. Man, that was long. That was like a rant. But good, good editing material there. That's some B roll of my thoughts. I'll get into the meat of it. And segment this up. And it was a bailout. The way they treated it, the way there was no regulation on that, those so called loans, which were basically just grants. Because when they had to pay that back, with these super low interest that we not paying. Now, we do need those restrictions, but they also need to put stuff in place to actually control the way these corporations do these things. But it's a finite thing, and Capitol Hill is not all going to agree on that because a lot of those people are business owners and they're cahoots with business owners and they're doing quid pro quo system. And that's not. That's to the, dis uh, it's to the disparity of the average man, period. Because the shareholders that they're thinking about, man, shareholders. Let's be real. A lot of them people who are in those boardrooms or on that shareholder committee, they got way more money than the average person. They're not the same type of people. They're just the average person. The average American or any country, it's all the same shit. Not a dictatorship, complete dictatorship, or a semi dictatorship is what all I see. Zombie debt, inflation, greed, profiteering. And we need to bring these manufacturing back. I'm sorry, but we need to bring a lot of manufacturing back. And I feel like the only reason they brought, they let all these people in the country because eventually those people gonna have jobs and be working and contribute to the tax money. But they're also votes. They look at them like that for. We don't vote for president, popular election, but that's votes for those people who. Are a part of this big slush fund collection scheme. It's a big ass Ponzi scheme. When you look at it, period. That's all it is. And liquidation, cannibalism. They raise the price that nobody can afford again, and then take it back and resell it. Take it back and resell it. Take it back and resell it. And they keep rotating that, recycling that. And the price always goes up. 
It doesn't stay anywhere near its true cost because it's greed. I do agree with them retaining these high interest rates on that stuff because that's the only thing that cools down buyers from just jumping in there and these crazy prices that people need to. It's always people got to get murked before. A lot of people got to get murked before the truth comes out because people just can't deal with it. People can't afford to do all this shit that this is going on. You can't afford these expensive ass cars, expensive ass food, expensive ass houses all at the same time and all these things being raised up just because people are paying it. If people stop paying it, the only way you only way to control it is as a mass. The mass of the average people, which outnumber that other group of people with those interests, those fiduciary responsibilities. The only way you can control that is with your money. So we have to be very selective of how that is done. And that's the problem. That's why they keep everybody in the dark and confused and miseducated. So you really don't understand how to control that market. Consumers control the market at the end of the day. People making the rules are that other group because they own it. Simple. That's where you got to get mastered in this shit so you can break it down to the common denominator. The simplest, factual, logical shit. Then, then he's duty bound. He's duty bound. The silver guard is duty bound. All of us are going to go to war for duty bound. It's systemic risk on top of those that have lost their lives. They, they can't afford to lose it all because they won't even be worth shit either. When it comes to survival of the fittest, them people ain't going to so they can't really let that go like that. I'll put the information out to help educate the public, but I'm not, they don't, YouTube ain't going to push that in the algorithm. Because it's against their best interests as a corporate company. Really. Let's be honest. That's why I do a lot of that comedy type shit. Just, be, just being funny. Voicing opinions and different shit. And that's why I was quiet for so long. Because you inject those great ideas into the, into the, the, the ether. People at the top are going to use it and cannibalize it. And people under it, they're going to take advantage of that. That slow roll, that stuff. That's the whole part. That's the whole point of this. I don't want everybody to fall off. Because I'm a part of that too. We're all a part of that. At the end of the day. Some people are better positioned than others. That's that's the main difference. But if they think about it as people, they make the right decision. Which is a hard ask in this cannibalistic society. Because people want to hoard. They were intensely Captain Dark. That's why I dropped all this science. Because science is the only thing that pushed that up. We get new technology. That's a means for a new profiteering. Is the word the the shit that's high tech now is gonna bump down like LCD TVs. You've seen the price of those fall down. You buy the shit for like ninety nine bucks when they used to cost six Gs when it came out. It's the only way to regulate that shit. It has to be other means. You have to have that that class thing there as far as um, products are concerned. That's what a fair market should look like with levels that you can buy into. But the prices shouldn't be so crazy. Difference like that. Income shouldn't be so crazy a difference like that. That's the problem. That's what I'm trying to help fix with education. That takes a while. Silicon Valley Bank bought San Francisco Power Group 
And the market is going to correct itself because people just can't afford to keep doing this foolishness. It's a bubble because it's a credit bubble at the end of the day. However you look at it, it's all a credit bubble. Unless you're wealthy or super rich. Or even very rich or pretty damn rich. <laughs> and that's where you're going to see a lot of people going to fall back down into the pool. That's what you're saying. And they make it seem like, oh, it's everybody in gloom and doom. It's not what it is. It doesn't have to be that. It has to be selective which markets we support. That's, at the end of the day, we have to be smarter consumers. Period. And that's why I put out all this shit. That's why I got all this stuff on my my uh, playlist. Some of it's just fun and entertainment. But if you look past that, it's there. We need smarter regulation. We need smarter regulation that protects the average person. Not interest, the average person. And that's sustainable if you do that. We only, if we're, only, if we're doing what we need. They all end up falling into that greed bucket at the end of the day when they get those quid pro quo situations come about. It's like they just can't, they can't resist. It's, it's sad. And I'm going to help. I'm going to keep helping. I don't want to help because I see a lot of this stuff is being skimmed up by big, big wallets, big credits. But it has to be put out there. It's the only way to correct it. It's the only way. Other than just letting it burn. You have to do controlled burns. Which means we can't. Can't 100% fuck over the housing market. Because we're all a part of that. Or the other wheels of commerce. Like agriculture and things like this. You can't. We can't fuck them all over. We have to be very selective of which ones we choose to keep. You got to keep the ones that are trying to do it right. That's the best thing you can do. You have to have smarter policies. As opposed to just more profit driven shit. Profit is important for a business, yes. But you can't sustain it without the people in that machine pulling those levers and making the right decisions. So in that, you're just going to create weaknesses, fractures, which are basically going to blow out the dams at the end of the day. Bubbles. Got to minimize bubbles. That's what we need to be doing. That's what policy should be about. Minimizing bubbles. If you do that, we'll be all right. It's pretty simple when you think about it. But getting people to agree on that, the people who are bankrolling this, that's the tough part. These investment firms and all that, that's the tough part. These corporations, that's the tough part. Because of the shareholders and their fiduciary responsibility, it's sickening. I hate. I don't like the stock market. I really don't. Because it's all speculative, and they propagandize it to control it, which the media is controlled by those families. You call it Illuminati, but it's really just families. And strong, strong based people. It can't save it all because the taxpayer can't afford it. Credit is already overstimmed in too many areas. It's not going to work. It has to correct. Unless you want to run away inflation and we end up like someplace like, I don't know, Zimbabwe or wherever you pick a country, Greece, whatever. It won't work in a long time. And that's why you see the market cycles because you see booms and busts because of greed and bad policy. You know, take care of the common man. It all the cars always fall. Simple. 
Housing can't be this pricey. Cars can't be this pricey. Food can't be this pricey. Can't just keep going up at the rate like that. You see the price on shit, shit going too high. Stop buying it. Let it cool off. They'll lower the price or they'll go out of business. Supply and demand. That's supply and demand. That's fine. You and the wealthy can't escape that. It might take them a lot longer, but they can't escape and they're going to gouge everybody underneath them before they, you know, let their legs get chopped out. And that's what you see. Yeah. Foolish. All right, I'm going to stop this video right after this. I'm going to let them play this out, and I'm just going to comment through it. Yeah, that was sick. A lot of golden parachutes, people who were making all these bad decisions, getting the golden parachutes and walking out of there because they made the investment some money by clipping a bunch of jobs and sending them overseas. It's a bunch of mess. It won't work. We need to do this shit in house, and it needs to be smart policy for the average person to be protected. That's how you have a healthy economy. We need to grow the middle class. The middle class is what it's all about. You grow that middle class, and we'd be very, very, a lot more efficient and sustainable. You can't just be like raping nature either. So that's a big part of this too. Climate change is real. But they treat it like another market that they want to cannibalize, which is sick. This is about these consumables. They want everything to be consumable. So I can make the products that last. We need to build better houses. Have better control on our protection as citizens. Bank of system out of control. Even these firms, a lot of them are going to go under because they overinvested trying to keep the prices super inflated. And they can't sustain it without the market buying into it, which people are already priced out of it because of greed. So it will fall. Those things will fall. They won't fall down and burn them. But the fluff is definitely going to get cut. A lot of it. Not all of it. A lot of it. Self correction. They don't need to fall because people don't need to be buying all this shit at these crazy prices because that's what sustains them and lets them be keep getting pumped up. And that when a bubble pop, a lot of people will get hurt. A lot of people bought into that, and they will lose money. But that's part of that inflation. That money is fake. The money itself is fake. I'm going to talk about that. Um, I forgot they call that money, but debt notes. But yeah, that's a whole other topic. Forget that right now. It's just pumped up. It needs to pop. It's going to make down the earth. So the average person can actually participate in those dreams. Because without that, what's the point? How do you keep that going? Where's the carrot? Ah, uh, marketing. Gotta love it, right? That's what they teach you. Follow these rules. Don't be a critical thinker. Just follow these rules. This and this is that. 
Terrence Howard plug. And that's just critical thinking. That's all. That's why I talk about flat earth. Not to prove flat earth, but to make people critically think as opposed to just being presented with theories that are assumed fact. Prove it. Logic should prove it. It should make sense. Like gravity versus density and buoyancy. You can prove density and buoyancy anywhere. Gravity is the theory. You can try to make it make sense, but density and buoyancy, you can prove that on a smaller scale. That's logic. That's fact. That's all I'm trying to do, get back to facts. That's what I was pitched, pitched at very heavily in Cowboy Nation, a whole other subject, but yeah. Same web. Same web. It's all in the same web. Hour. I mean, yapping. <laughs> I don't want to edit this. That's why it's so long. I don't want to segment. I want to get the free thought. Free form thought and critical thinking. That's what I'm about. It strengthens your mind. And that's why they ran with it. That's why they kept pushing that surplus. We need to balance those, balance these books back out. Mm. Yeah. We always need to cushion, but the greed cannot be the, the motivation behind it. It should be sustainability. It should be a percentage that it's allowed to do. That will correct. That will be like self-correcting. Hit that cap. Okay, it's time to do this. Hit that cap. Okay, it's time to do this. But there's no caps. They just let it go all the way out of control. That's the problem with the prices. As high as people will pay, that's what they're willing to let it do. As opposed to, yeah, we can't keep raising these prices. You know, that's not sustainable. We can't afford it. We can't work that much. You can't pay out three times your earnings <laughs> sustainably because anything goes wrong, you're already underwater. A lot of people are just going underwater. Incomes aren't going up with that. Not all, the average person's income anyway. We ain't talking about super rich or very rich. Anybody above that. Because that's, that's, that's not the bulk of society anywhere. They build this to the average man, we'll see a lot more sustained success. Success. You can't worry about the competition. You need to worry about the balance. As long as we got these big stack bullies worrying about the competition, shit gonna be fucked up. Because they're gonna put stuff in place to prop themselves up and cut the legs out of everybody under them. Which basically ultimately is that's that income disparity. You see it all over the place. It's, it's such a clear indication of what has happened and been happening. And that's how to get people. Liquidation. You see it in cars. These crazy interest rates people can't afford to keep any little problem. You can't afford to fix them. The next thing you know, you get the other shit took back and they reselling that for a profit. It's, it's cannibalistic. That's why I say we live in a cannibalist society as opposed to a true democracy. It's not being built for the common person. That's the problem. It, it's not sustainable. Yes, because all you're doing is paying interest and not getting any paying down principal. Being an owner. The more people were able to be owners of different things, we'd be good. That's a healthy economy. That's growing the middle class, but we've got away from that. It's sick. 
quantitative easing is bullshit. It won't. If you following my motto, it ain't just my motto. There's a lot of people put this stuff out there. That's why I put them on my channel, on my playlist, because there's a lot of people who have the same concepts. We just explain the different segments of the same issues. You can take this one template and put it on any of these markets, housing, food, industrial. It's the same template. It's a broken template. Smart regulation, not just new, smart regulation. And Capitol Hill ain't gonna agree on that because they're still being pork barrels into these policies at fiduciary interest. And that's the problem. They're supposed to be working for the common man. Taxpayer money is where they make all this shit off of all these black budgets. This is ridiculous. That's why I call them black budgets, pure profit. <laughs> Damn near. A million, $100 million to make this plane. Why? The material costs ain't that high. Engineering is already put out there. You pay for, initially, you pay for the um, development, research development. After you get that and the production in line, those prices should fall, period, period. But it's all about profit, and that's the problem. Every market. Template is sick. The blueprint for that shit is sick. That's why I got this blueprint. The truth, logic, critical thinking, practical application. That's smarter policy. That's mastery. I'm at about an hour. I'm going to stop. I'm going to cut it at an hour, regardless. Because this is a more than enough B-roll for me to deal with. And I probably won't even put this out. That's the crazy part. <laughs> Yeah, you've seen wealthy people push their agendas. Propaganda. And that's not sustainable because that doesn't reflect the average person. That's the problem. You bond into this because you hear it so much over and over and over. You beat over the head with it. This is the facts. Those ain't facts. Facts should make sense. These are theories and they don't work. Yeah, it's a appraisal thing. The city's even jumping in this, like, corporate. It's sick. They've been doing it for a while, but they become more bold. I'm going to put this out. I'm going to put this out. This is a long video, but I'm going to put it out. But it's like, man, this is crazy. It's crazy. The smarter you get, the more in tune and in sync, the more you master this, the crazier it seems, because it is. You recognize the, those templates are broken. Not even going off the rules. The logic. Balances. I used to watch Rent Snake. It was gross. <laughs> they need to correct these markets. These, these cars need to come back down. Like 60 G's is definitely a luxury car. I think the average car costs about 15000 Material costs, how much does the metal cost? They're writing it off anyway, a lot of that shit. You got a lot of a lot of taxes coming off that because you're taxing the workers who are making it, the corporations who are building it. You know, you got to kind of bounce that into the budgets. It shouldn't all be falling down to the consumer. You want to do some um, <clears throat> subsidies? Work it that way because that money comes back around. You need that money in circulation, right? the money not circulating, then it's not any good. Which means if you're putting it into the pockets of all the wealthy and the super rich, it doesn't mean shit. 
they're just hoarding it. And they're spending it on ridiculous shit that doesn't come back here anyway. It gets paid out to places like Italy and all the places who make the super exotic shit. But they use all the same material, same raw materials. It's just branding. Propaganda. And greed. Can't forget that part. Golden parachutes. Sick. There's the people at the on the bottom of that working like that. So people like me, and I'm not even towards the bottom of this thing really. I'm towards the bottom as far as like the big, the grand scale, but in the human aspect. Shit is sick. They're going to pop their own bubbles. And the people who at the bottom of those pyramids are going to pay for it. That's always the case. And so until we band together, it's going to keep happening. That's why we need smarter policy. We're going to keep getting hosed. Keep getting liquidated. People don't see it that way, though. They think they're really gatekeepers and this and that. No, you're not. You're part of that. You're part of this reciprocal cycle. 